What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Guns and Tactics. My name is Rex and today we're going to be talking about my Gucci Glock 19 Everyday Carry Concealed Carry build. Anyway, I know it's not for everybody, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be going through all the parts, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, which is not going to be a lot. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Now before we start, as usual, make sure you hit that subscribe button in the lower right corner of your screen, hit that bell button so you get notified every time we drop a video, and make sure to share it with your friend. Now, I know you guys are, a lot of you guys are probably going to ask, but why? Why would you want to modify your gun? The main purpose of modifying the gun is to improve upon itself, right? So like I'm not doing anything, most, a lot of it, yes, fine, is aesthetic, like it's aesthetically pleasing to look at but I'm also trying to add some functionality. I'm gonna dive in, talk about the different aspects of the gun that I've modified this gun to be, and uh, yeah, go from there. All right, so before we start, we're gonna make sure the gun is clear. The gun is in fact clear. This is the magazine for my everyday carry. This is my holster that I use. It's the LAS Concealment Saya C. Love this, absolutely love this holster. Conceals well. I have a review of LAS Concealment. I'll we'll leave it right here. All right, so to start off, this is a Gen 5 Glock 19. Um, gonna go ahead and talk about all the different parts, the different companies, like I said, that I went to to put this Gucci Glock 19 build together. Um, we're gonna start from the top down. Up here, we have a Dynamic Weapon Solutions slide. This is their Mark IV Responder slide. Yes, the barrel is dirty. This came back from a range day about a week ago. I haven't gotten a chance to clean it. Um, this is their Mark IV Responder slide. Absolutely love this slide. It is a minimalist to an extent slide. Um, we have these uh, front and rear and top serrations. Since they're not too rough, but they're enough that you're able to get a pretty good purchase on the gun to charge it from the front over the top and whatnot not quite as aggressive as other serrations out there um, I did without the windows like my other Glocks I have windows on the top and the sides and all that so I wanted to keep this one simple as simple as possible even though it is still considered um, a, a Gucci build um, I have just some Ameriglow tall suppressor height sights the Trijicon SRO I got here is the one MOA version. It is absolutely amazing. I love this red dot. It's not built for, not quite as rugged as the Armar, quote unquote the ruggedized um, dot. Uh, there have been issues of this breaking. I haven't dropped it and I don't plan to, but things can happen. So there's a company called Jigger Works. Jaeger works that makes a shroud to go around it. I'm still waiting on mine to come in and probably throw that on there just for added protection. Um, what makes it vulnerable to damage is the fact that this isn't, this is rounded and no longer has that, um, that U shape at the top here that regular armars have that give it the durability. Um, as far as one MOA dot goes, I find it to be fast because of the big aperture in the window on the dot. It still gives me a fast um, target acquisition and uh, I make precise shots out to 100, 100, 100, 100 yards um, with no issues. The one issue that I do have with the SRO is during high noon or bright daylight, um, right over the sun when you're aiming towards the sun, you'll get a reflection on the dot that looks on the on the glass that looks like the dot, but it's not actually the dot. It's just a reflection. I'll show a video clip here. I'm 
try to show you guys what I mean is that when you're aiming, it almost looks like you see the red dot, but it's not, it's just a reflection in it. So that's my only downside to the SRO, other than that I do love it. Internals are stock, um, I have a stock spring. The barrel is a L2D combat gold barrel because you know, gotta keep it Gucci. Um, no issues with accuracy, it's, it's uh, just about right. I'm not a precision shooter and it's combat effective for me, so I have no issues with it. So this is not my first dynamic weapon solution slide. I have a couple other Reaper slides in my Glock 17 and my Glock 19X and I'll show you here. Um, absolutely love those. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to keep it simple. I didn't even get any camo um, on these on this uh, on this slide. Um, pricing wise, they're not as bad as they used to be. Um, you can get pre-made slides, pre-cut slides for about two between two and three hundred dollars. You add Cerakote code and and um, different camos to that. The price will go up um, accordingly. Now the only down downside to getting a milled slide is uh, the wait. So wait times vary between a month to three months depending on um, what kind of configuration you get, if it's a ready to ship slide or if it's a slide that you have to send in and whatnot. Um, they're able to do MOS and they're able to mill um, whatever red dot you have to put on um, your Glock. So if you're just after a, a Ready made, uh, ready, ready to ship slide. Um, the lead time should be a lot uh, quicker. Um, but as for like getting it actually milled, so the wait, the lead times might be a little long. So if you have patience, you have another carry that you have, or, or if you could do without the gun for a few weeks or a few months, um, then this, you know you're good to go. Moving on down, I have a def. Uh, the framework is done by Defcon Three. This is my third Defcon frame, and I absolutely love them. Uh, this is their Alpha One package with the Tac Mesh uh, stipple pattern, double undercut with the be the glove bevel here with the finger finger bevel. Um, got a accelerator cut here, so you're able to. Put some downward pressure in the front to help mitigate recoil pretty sweet job i have od green or this is ranger green i believe this is ranger green on black two-tone um you can get it in different camo patterns defcon 3 is definitely one of the better um, stipple companies out there um they're, he's quick he's uh he's quick communication is great I mean, the quality, I mean, you can just tell from there, just looking at it, the quality in and of itself speaks for itself. Um, Tac Mesh is probably my favorite pattern. He has a few patterns. It's not too aggressive. It's it's great for everyday carry. It doesn't rub up on your skin, but you still get a good grip on the gun, um, even with wet and sweaty hands. And then we're gonna talk about the light. So the reason that I picked the TLR7 um, I used to run an APLC, and although I loved it, uh, the fact that it was a polymer body, polymer uh, framed light um, with a decent amount of luminage, it was like 200 lumens uh, for an everyday carry. It was good enough, but good enough doesn't always really cut it, and there's been issues break of it breaking. I've never had mine fail on me, but Streamlight has a very solid reputation and when they first came out with the TLR7 with that button side button mumbo jumbo um, I got one of those and those weren't the best and then they came out with this thumb um, activated one which is a huge improvement the TLR7A so I'm very happy with this uh, not quite as intuitive as the APLC um, with APLC it's either you activate it with your trigger finger or your thumb these buttons aren't as intuitive in my opinion it's just it's just how the reach it's just where my grip is on the gun. So when I have a good solid master grip, um, I'm not, I really have to concentrate on getting low to activate the button, which not, it's not necessarily a deal breaker, but I'm not intuitive as just like simply being able to press on it. So I have to really, I have to kind of reach down and that's already on the high buttons or there's a high option and the low option. I'm still really having to reach it. That being said, like I said, it's not a deal breaker. Still able to actuate it. I can actuate it with both my trigger finger and my support thumb. Um, so yeah, no issues there. Like I said, 
really like it. I like how compact it is um, that I'm able to get it in. <clears throat> I like how flush compact it is. The fact that it's flush with the, the end of the muzzle that I could use um, my LAS holster and it secures fine and I'm not adding too much, um, as, you know, as opposed to having X300, which adds another inch and, inch and a half to the end. Moving down, I have the SLR Rifle Works Magwell. Um, this Magwell works very well. <laughs> Magwell works very well with this gun. Uh, it doesn't impede in any way or doesn't hang up the gun in, uh, for mag changes and the magazines drop free with no issue and I'm able to make fast and quick reloads with this magwell. Onto the trigger, I have the Fowler Industries trigger. Uh, the black, I mean, this is their gray trigger. Uh, it is just the trigger shoe itself, just hooking on the trigger shoe to the stock trigger bar. So as far as the trigger goes, you're not losing any of the reliability or safety, but you're also not adding very much as far as um, the trigger as far as the, the trigger impression goes. You do get the flat face, but um, you're not reducing the weight, you're not making it crisper or anything like that, you're not making it smoother, softer, lighter, or anything like that. You're ultimately just uh, changing out the trigger shoe. I went with Fowler because like I said, it doesn't change the trigger weight since this is a defensive pistol. I didn't want to make it any lighter. Um, like This is a, a Gen 5 Glock 19 um, that their triggers are already pretty good um, and I just wanted to change the look and the feel. I like the flat face, I love how it looks. The gray on the green looks amazing um, and yeah, I'm not losing any of the safety and reliability features of the, uh, of the stock Glock. Now the question is now is do any of these modifications to this gun make you a better shooter and the answer without a doubt is no the only way to become a better shooter is to practice learn your fundamentals um, be proficient with your fundamentals and go from there that's the only way to really improve and to get better is practice 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 learn fundamentals um, take classes take defensive courses if you're new to shooting that being said too if you're new to shooting i wouldn't spend my money on modifications like this when people say you, you're better off spending the money on ammo and training, absolutely, I, I agree. Um, now, if you're proficient with your firearm, you've had a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand rounds down range, and you feel like you're um, you're ready to step up, go ahead, modify your gun. And with that being said, <laughs> it's a free country; you could do whatever you want with your money. Um, if you're not really into shooting, you just want to have a pretty piece, by all means, go ahead and modify a Glock. And as far as everything goes, I love it. I absolutely love this gun. It's fast, it's reliable, it conceals well. Um, it's not big and bulky like a Glock 17 or a Glock 34 or a Glock 19X with a comp like I have. Um, this one I could bring just about anywhere and not have to worry about it. Uh, the light is perfect as far as the size goes, how flush it is with the uh, the muzzle. Um, like I said, this, is, this isn't this is for everybody. This isn't everyone's cup of tea. But if you're into modifying your firearms, take a look at these companies. They're great companies. They offer great customer service. Links are going to be down below. Dynamic Weapon Solutions, DEFCON 3, Fowler Industries, SLR Rifle Works, Streamlight, L2D, Trigicon and I think that's it for the parts. Well, this concludes our video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about my personal concealed carry Glock 19. Um, huge shout out to Wooby Brothers Apparel for this cool, now I'm kind of warm <laughs> in um, a white camo Wooby hoodie, LAS Concealment, shout out to LAS Concealment for awesome holsters. Shout out also to 2A3D, this is their Mandalorian, Beskar, you know, two, 3D printed polymer pistol stand thing. Good stuff. I mean, it's pretty great quality. Obviously, it's 3D printed polymer, um, but for what it is, it does a great job. Plus, it looks cool. It's freaking Beskar, man. Look at that. 
you have any more questions about this particular gun or any of the companies that I went to to put this build together, comment down below. Make sure you're following us on Instagram at Guns and Tactics, my personal page at Mr. Pew Life. Any more questions that you have, hit up that email. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.